we're looking at the C2 structure that allows us to execute global campaign plans. And the example I use to get us to think about what this means, right, let's think about a, this, a single trajectory of a missile launched from North Korea. So we get an IR uh, infrared plume, we have an event, right? Uh, we get a sense of it, right? We don't know exactly what it is yet, we just know we have an event. On that moment, when we have an event, who's the supported commander? It would be uh, USFK, US Forces Korea, and indo -Pecum. And so now it starts hitting up, and we still don't know what it is, we know it's a launch of some kind, and it started hitting up, and it's headed towards space, and we're not sure whether it's an actually anti-satellite missile, and whether we have to take action. At that point, who is the supported commander when it's going straight up? It's the STRATCOM commander, soon to be now the U.S. Space Command commander. But now we're continuing to characterize it and it tips over and it starts heading towards one of our allies or partners. Who's the supported commander? It goes back to indo -PACOM. And then it overflies and it starts heading towards the west coast of the United States. Who's the supported commander? It just became NORTHCOM NORAD. So in the trajectory of a single missile flight, we have changed supported and supporting relationships while the missile's in flight. Our C2 has to be agile enough for that. And so we're thinking about global campaign plans and global fires to make sure that we're ready for that global kind of a fight.